This is a federal sewing table bought for $45 by the owner's grandfather in 1929 in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. The owner had the table appraised about 15 years ago in Baltimore for around $4,500. However, it's identified that the table is fake and made in the teens and 20s in Boston. It knew that this was a fashionable style. People wanted to buy this type of federal sewing stand, so they were knocking them out in large numbers. The piece is constructed to imitate the federal style, but lacks genuine age indicators. It were of, from 1810, it would be very valuable, probably be worth about twelve to $14,000. Despite being fake, the item is still valued when sold in retail. When they're not period, they're worth about $800 to $1,000. You know. Okay. Uh, I brought it here to find out what it was all about, so thank See you ya. very much. This owner received crystals from Ralph Roberts, Marilyn Monroe's masseur and friend. Ralph Roberts was born on August 16th in 1916 in Salisbury, North Carolina. He was an actor known for the Alfred Hitchcock Hour, Killer's Kiss, and Bells Are Ringing. Roberts drove Monroe to her home in Roxbury, Connecticut, to retrieve her belongings during her divorce from Arthur Miller. Crystals were given to Roberts by Monroe during that time. The owner provided a notarized story and picture with Roberts for documentation. These valued the crystals, shaped like a heart, at approximately two to three thousand dollars in an auction. In 1999, the heir to the Strasburg estate actually put up the rest of her belongings and had a massive estate sale, which set auction records and did tremendously well. This swivel gun was passed on to the guest father from a doctor who obtained it in the course of his work in Russian Fort Sitka, Alaska. This small cannon used to be a staple during wartime in Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. The portability of the swivel gun allows it to be mounted on the ship and gives the shooter flexibility to aim in several different directions. This type of cannon is called a lentaka cannon and was manufactured during the 19th century. This swivel gun is quite unusual with its decorative features, contributing to its valuation ranging between $800 to $1,200 at auction. Twelve hundred? Yeah. Okay. What is the most expensive or special watch you have ever owned? Please let me know in the comments. This guest presented a diamond watch acquired by their parents 20 years ago. They bought it at a private estate sale for $500. The item featured diamonds arranged in the form of a cross and contained the Lord's Prayer inside. The appraiser identified the diamonds as rose cut, typical for the period of manufacture from around 1850 to 1865. The watch had blue guilloche enamel, finely done in France, giving it a translucent blue finish. It had two panels, one containing the Lord's Prayer and the other panel revealing the movement of the watch. The enamel and rose diamonds added aesthetic appeal to it. How much would the item be valued? At auction today, in the neighborhood of somewhere from $2,000 to $3,000. Goodness gracious. Just by looking at this hard case, you would see that it is a high-grade Martin ukulele enclosed within. The guest bought this Martin 3K ukulele that he inherited from his dad, who purchased it for less than $10. This miniature Martin guitar boasts multiple bindings and a delicate celluloid ornament, stripped down to the fingerboard. What sets this apart from other Martin ukuleles is its ebony fingerboard that extends to the sound hole unlike the shorter rosewood fingerboards typically found in lower-end models. This instrument, crafted with koa, features distinctive metal friction pegs that were introduced in the 1920s. With its original hard case and other specifications, this model is valued at around $3,000 to $3,500. Oh my god, this, this is awesome! The guest brought in a patriotic wall hanging that she got from her father. The history behind this wall hanging started with the guest grandfather, who purchased it around 1881 to 1911, when he was serving in the American Navy. Originally, this piece was made in Yokohama, Japan, around 1907 to 1908. This hanging is a silk embroidery, stitched with thread onto heavy paper, and finished with vibrant colors describing the American Navy taking the Great White Fleet around the world. The estimated value of each wall hanging is twelve to fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. The guest came to the show with this Royal Crown Derby tea wear that she'd purchased, 
with the help of a maid who informed her of a lovely stash of kitchenware during her condolence visit to the house. This is a collection of painted English teawares that were popularly referred to as a trio because it consists of a teapot, creamer, and sugar bowl. The distinctive thing about this particular teaware is that it consists of cups and saucers, with each piece having hand-painted scenes right in the center, surrounded by a cobalt blue background. The painting on the teawares were that of the Regency period, indicating that it was manufactured around 1815 to 1820. On the back of the teaware is an English mark bearing the Cumberland with a Crown Derby mark below it. Given that this teaware is titled and in stable condition, the set has an estimated value of $3,000. My goodness, so I have seven teacups and eight coffee cups and eight deep saucers and a... The guest brought in personal memoirs of a U.S. military officer and politician, Ulysses S. Grant. They were purchased from a bookstore in Detroit, run by an Irish lady and her mother. The appraiser highlighted the significance of the books, praising them as one of the best autobiographies ever written. The books cover the life of Grant up to the Civil War. He actually was financially very secure until his son got him into a essentially a Ponzi scheme. However, the book was incredibly successful, selling thousands of copies at the time. It bears a signature, yet it raises suspicion since Grant passed away before their publication. The signature is actually a facsimile printed in every copy of the book. Despite this, the book's historical significance and popularity were acknowledged. The value estimated was around $350. Okay. <laughs> if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. The guest brought in a bracelet she received as a gift from her aunt in the 1950s. It's an original H.A.R. piece from Hargo Creations of New York, a company renowned for crafting exotic and limited jewelry. The bracelet is part of a rare collection called the Genie Bracelet, which also includes a genie brooch. The principal component of the bracelet is made of lucite, featuring an image of the Taj Mahal and Aladdin's lamp, making it a unique and custom piece of jewelry. The H.A.R. creation is a multi-layered 3D composition consisting of a genie bracelet valued at $1,200 and the brooch that is priced at $200 each. That's amazing. I had no idea. This cane has been a cherished family heirloom for over 80 years. It was acquired by the guest great-grandfather during a demolition. Inscribed on the handle is the name of Colonel William Lamb who received it from the Norfolk Police Department in 1881. The cane features intricate carvings starting with George Washington at the top and spiraling down with names, including the engraver, C.M. Sharpley, in 1880. Notably, Lamb was a Civil War colonel, known for his command at Fort Fisher, despite Union attacks. The cane's handle showcases a lineage of mayors from Lamb's family, making it a unique blend of folk art, local politics, and Civil War history. At the very bottom is William Lamb's name, and I don't know if you looked before, but there are two other Lambs that are carved in this area. So his father's name and his grandfather's gotcha. name is carved there. The rolled gold handle, adorned with tobacco leaves, is complemented by a short ferrule, indicating its age and historical significance. Its auction value is around $4,000, making it a valuable and historically rich collectible. Oh, really? Yeah. That's fantastic. We have an exciting piece, a signed photograph of none other than Joan Crawford. And we also have a handwritten schedule penned by Crawford herself. The schedule was followed meticulously by the guest grandmother, who worked as Crawford's nanny for a brief period in the 1940s. These items were discovered among the possessions of the guest's late father, who had stored them in the house where their grandmother had worked. Crawford's generosity in signing documents contrasts sharply with the controversial aspects of her personal life, particularly highlighted in the book Mommy Dearest by her daughter Christina. The schedule provides firsthand insight into Crawford's strict control over her household, outlining detailed instructions for the care of her children. Notably, it includes instructions to tie up the baby in his play chair during room cleaning, offering concrete evidence of Crawford's authoritarian parenting style. The appraiser emphasizes the significance of these documents as a rare glimpse into the Crawford's private life and suggests that, along with the photograph, 
they could fetch between a whopping four to six thousand dollars. The guest brought in a signed book titled The Art of Rock, authored by Paul Grushkin. Initially priced at $90, the guest found a copy at a flea market for $50. The book featured 242 signatures from various artists, musicians, and renowned figures. Everyone from Willie Nelson to Joan Baez. We have a giant Steve Miller down here. Remarkably, it also contained signatures from influential artists, such as Victor Moscoso and Stanley Mouse, and even contributed to a drawing. The book itself included the seminal work that documented all of the posters of that era. Even though the book has some damage, its value goes up because its signatures were collected over 25 years ago. How much would this item be valued? At auction, I would put an estimate around two to 3000 on the book. Okay. This pair of French porcelain figures was brought to the show by a woman. She stated that the pieces belonged to her grandmother, along with the foyer and mate that go with it. With careful inspection, the figures were probably made in France in the 1880s, but has little details about who the figures represent and the artist who made them. This is not your everyday, ordinary table. It's a piece of history. It's crafted by Philip and Kelvin Laverne, masters of high-end furniture design. The Chan series table, known as the Festival Console, showcases their unparalleled skill in metalwork and artistic expression. They didn't make a lot of these tables, and you especially do not see labels still attached to them. So it's amazing that yours still has that paper label. With its intricate acid etch process, incorporating bronze, pewter, and patinated enamel, this table is a testament to the Laverne's innovation and creativity. The guest acquired this remarkable piece for a mere $600 and initially estimated its worth around $1,000. However, the truth is far more astonishing. Despite the reservations, the table's estimated auction value stands between fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Oh no! Yes, <laughs> fifteen thousand to twenty thousand. Oh my goodness! Oh 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 no! Oh. The guest brought these German Four Seasons porcelain figurines that she got during a clear out of her husband's grandmother's place. The figurine was purchased in an antique store in Illinois by the guest husband's great-grandfather for his wife during their housewarming in the 40s. Going by the name, the figurines depict spring, summer, fall, and winter. Incredible modeling on these figurines is remarkable, and the drapery at the back of each of them was crisply molded. Also, the flower painting on the dress and the detail are indicative of a Mason-style design. Mason is a top German company that set a precedent with the use of high-paced porcelain, which is a distinctive attribute of German porcelain. The Mason-style design gives the impression that these Four Seasons porcelain figurines were made between 1850 and 1880. Taking into consideration the age, the quality of the porcelain, and the almost perfect condition, the porcelain would have a retail value between $1,500 to $2,000. Wow. If we did additional research, yeah. we might figure out who made them, and that might help the value a little bit. Stay informed of our new videos by subscribing to this channel and ringing the notification bell.